Hello, good evening and welcome to my humble model railway, Bedstead Junction. Uh, it's getting quite late actually, it's uh, Sunday night, it's the 18th of uh, September 2022. And it's very, very, very late now. But I thought I'd shoot this video. Um, now, I forgot to cover a particular point in uh, my previous video, my review of the lovely uh, Hornby T9, which you can see in the foreground down here. And... Um, what I forgot to mention was the, the running over points. Okay, I didn't do the points test. Um, slip my mind, so I apologise for that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put that right now for you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go and set the points now to bring this one out of the station. And we're just going to see how this one goes over points coming in and out of the station. And that will give you a good idea about what the uh, performance is. Of this locomotive so if we just bear with just a moment just, just going to change the points in the uh, other end of the layout there we go we're all set we can have a little running session uh, of this one it's just comparing the two actually what we've got um in the foreground is the hornby um t9 uh pre-grouping lswr t9 and in the background the southern railway schools class eastbourne and it's going to give you a chance of uh comparing the two liveries uh you must agree there's quite an extreme difference and both liveries are correct okay what we're going to do first of all let's uh have a look and see if we can uh Bring this locomotive out of the station. Now, one thing you probably will observe on this locomotive as it came out of the station. So I just uh, get checked on it there. Is that all the wheels were revolving? So there's no binding or clogging up of the wheels or anything like that. Just go back a little bit in there towards the signal. That's right. Just bring it forward, and then we're just going to show you what she's like coming into the station as well. I should want you zoom in just ever so slightly. I don't know. Press it right there. Yeah, no. I don't know if that's any bigger. Let's give it a go. Oh. Okay, that's fine, just got the point set. Okay, so what we do now is we just bring her in. So we just check the points over properly. And put into forward gear. And away we go. Down over those uh, points there. And just watch her coming in. And keep focus on the engine. Slowing things down. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Okay, so perfectly smooth running. I made short work of that of that set of points. Uh, that's a right hand point going into a right hand point. So it's uh, fair, fairly complicated and um, no stumbling or anything like that. Absolutely perfect. So let's try her running now. Um, so we'll reverse it back at the station and once again and just watch those wheels they're all turning properly over those points beautifully again no uh, no stumbling sorry about my uh, poor camera control there no uh, Right, let's put her into forward gear and we can have a little brief talk about her. I, I've covered everything in my previous review that there probably to, to cover, but you can see her running just in case you don't um, get to see the other review that I uh, the, the other review that I did earlier. Okay, now these two are locos from two different eras of Hornby, let's say. And of, of two different areas of the, of the Southern or the London and South Western Railway. Now, the locomotive 
which we've got about to run is um, our 3863 LSWR T9 class 440 number 120. So I don't know if you can see that now, nice and clear. That's the one that you can see there. And it's in Sage Green. Sage Green, DCC Ready, National Railway Museum. Brand it. And the other locomotive, which you'll see, which was the Scores Class, is R2144, Southern Railway 440 Scores Class V Locomotive, Eastbourne. Eastbourne would be a, uh, the name of a, of a score. Alright, double O gauge again. But giving you some idea about the uh, the age of the locomotive, there's no mention on the box of uh, DCC ready. Okay, we'll go into that in just a moment. Okay, so here we go. And you'll agree from uh, what you can see there, very, very, very nice runner. We'll watch her out going over through the uh, station over there. Should be good. Then uh, rank processing the box. Thanks to the level crossing. And again, there's sets of points which this uh, locomotive is going over and making short work of. So it's going through the uh, country station there. One of 66 locomotives built by Dubois Drummond. They were capable of over 18 miles per hour. This is the preserved one. This is the preserved one. It's uh, preserved at the moment. It's on the Swanage Railway. But it is actually um, owned by the National Railway Museum. It's a, the, um, the Swanage Railway has, has custody of it at the moment. And I think it's awaiting a boiler certificate before it can go back onto the into service again. Am I pleased with this locomotive? I mean, you can read the review. Well, or look, at, look at my review, let's say. Watch that. And from that, you, can, you will gather, yes, I'm very, very pleased with this locomotive. Straight out of the box, uh, running well with no uh, troubles whatsoever. Brilliant. Now it's got an eight wheel tender. Uh, the main reason why the tenders were quite large on the uh, Southern Railway was because they never had any water troughs. So they couldn't really uh, replenish their water while the, rail while the actual um, locomotive was on the move. But of course the Great Western did have water troughs and they just had, on the Great Western you just had to lower a scoop uh, and um, sort of draw out water while the locomotive was still still on the uh, on the move, but these um, would um, obviously require stopping at a water crane or water tower for replenishment. But to confuse matters even more, there were some built with uh, six wheel tenders and um, certain models. I don't think these were um, because of the size of the turntables. And we'll go to that a little bit more when we talk about the scores class. Okay. Very nice, it's got a die cast boiler on this uh, locomotive here. Really smooth and graceful runner. I mean, I've got no reservations about the running qualities of this particular locomotive. Really, really nice. Um, it's putting a rake off uh, Great Western coaches because I don't have any uh, pre grouping um, LSWR coaches. I've got the, I've got the green um, Southern Railway coaches which are behind the uh, scores class at the moment. But I think it looks really, really nice with the uh, Great Western coaches. And my advice would be, if you like it, uh, if you like it, run it. And uh, personally, I mean, I wouldn't be too much of a stickler for, for, exact, for going, like, you know, the exact coaches with the exact locomotive. We try our best. But, you know, we can't all afford to uh, buy an endless uh, or supply of, of, of uh, coaches in, to go with the locomotives. Um, I will get them, though, in, in due course. But I think if you like it, if you like what you're running, 
run it. it, it, it you know, it's uh, it's our railway that we that we own. <coughs> and while we're going round, I'll tell you a, a little brief story about um about what you know what you can and can't run on a railway. And it relates to my time many, many years ago when I had the privilege of helping uh, at exhibitions. Okay, I'm, I'm way out of the, been out, way out of the uh, modern railway scene for a long time. And that was really down to the circumstances, um, work and life got in the way and everything else. But I, I did lose contact. But <clears throat> there was a little incident we had many, many years ago where we were, well, I was helping out on a very, very long end-to-end -end layout and people were... Um, feeding locomotives from one end. Um, some of the points on the, uh, the the actual layout were manual, so we had to change some of the points as we were going uh, uh, along. And um, so I was halfway down the layout. And um, this this is how, how people can be. Okay, how people can be. Now you'll get people out there. I mean, on the exhibition circuit, and certainly, I mean, obviously, when I was doing it, there was no YouTube. But uh, you'll get so many shouts out there. Uh, they'll be thinking of some great pearl of wisdom, which is uh, really a negative, some kind of negative comment, you know. And they think they, you know, I think they, they think they're being helpful. But um, I'm sort of like uh, waiting for my train to this train to come down. I can see this thing coming out. I can, I, I can hear a little child shout, "Daddy, Daddy, look! There's your star." In fact, when your star was, you know, new, a new model on, on Horn Bay. You know, wow, Daddy, look. And um, somebody shut me out. Huh, you can't run that on that layout. Um, to which I answered back, hooked up and answered back, well, I do believe we just did. I think that sufficed. And then another one of my uh, colleagues on, the, on there said, well, okay, uh, well, where's your layout to then? Where, which, which, what's your stand number? We'll come have a look at your layout and see how it should be done. I mean, well, well, I haven't got a layout. I've not got one here. Okay, well, uh, okay, fine. Nice to meet you, sir. And that was it. But, it, but the answer to that is, it's your railway. It's your railway. It's my railway, and what I choose to run is my pers is my personal choice. But of course, I, I will actually tell you if anybody shouts out, yes, we've got a Southern Railway pre-grouping uh, locomotive going round with um, some pre-grouping Dean Claressery coaches. But I think it looks quite nice. It looks quite graceful with those uh, coaches. And I think they were the most appropriate ones. And sorry, sorry, I probably didn't bore you with that story about the, about the exhibition. But it, it goes to show, you know, and then, you do get some people being helpful, okay, and they make helpful comments, but the, the, the nice people are also always, always, say, always say something nice as well, you know. But when someone just says something negative and nothing else, well, you know, I mean, okay, sometimes it's, it's a good point to raise, you know, but... Uh, I think we need more positive. We need lots of positivity in life, don't we? Okay, right, that's my little um, thing over there. So we're going back then. I say sage green is a colour, definitely the right livery. And I, to be honest with you, first of all, when I saw this uh, livery, I think it was Sam's Trains did a review. Um, I rubbed my eyes. I, I, I will admit, I rubbed my eyes. I thought, my goodness. So we used to see the various other, you know, Southern Railway greens, you know, and the uh, Oliver Bullet green is a different colour again. But this is, in fact, the right, um, the right colour. Um, somebody, I think it was Mike's Movers, made a visit to uh, the real, uh, to, to have a look at the actual um, Adams Radial Tank, the last Adams Radial Tank in that uh, in preservation. And it's got the exact same livery as this. And so is the Hornby uh, Adams Radio Tank. So this livery is absolutely correct, and I absolutely love it. This uh, was a great influence, sir, on me actually wanting to buy this locomotive. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run this locomotive in, because we've seen her in my previous video today. But I thought I'd give her, a, you know, let, her, let you, you see her again, and watch her 
gracefully go around my layout. And more importantly, what she like on points? Well, I think we would have answered that question by now. So away we go. And then we'll move on to the, we'll move on to our lovely scores class. So this is pre-grouping. This locomotive would have been booked before 1923. That's when the, the grouping came about. Uh, perhaps we'll talk about what the grouping is in just a moment, because a lot of you won't know. And I don't, if you don't know, I don't blame you for not knowing. If people don't know, they don't know. Uh, so uh, let's um, move in and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Obviously, plenty of you out there will know what the grouping is all about. But I'm always conscious that I, that when I make these videos, I could be watch, uh, could be making these videos, and they could be being watched by people who are new to the hobby, and I don't want to go throwing loads of jargon and, uh, you know, making the whole thing in incomprehensible to people. So please excuse me if I do explain things a little bit, you know, in simple terms sometimes, but. Um, I think it's more. I think it's important for those people new to the hobby. Now the focus will be on our Southern Railway Eastbourne. Quick change of points. Right, let's try and... There she goes. Now, I'll tell you a few things about this. Yes, again, model-wise, this is from a different era, okay? So, the real locomotives are from two different eras. And these, uh, mod model-wise, they're from two different eras for Hornby. Now, this uh, lovely Eastbourne that we're about to see going around the track, <coughs> excuse me, is from the tender drive era. So the actual, um, it's got a Ringford motor in the tender. And in my opinion, it's a beautiful runner. Everything in life got its uh, plus points. And this is the plus point, that, you know, is I'm quite familiar with the Ringford motor. I'm quite, you know, I, I can work on them. I get me screwed over out and I can mess about with them if I need to. But uh, let's have a look now. Let's uh, put her into gear now. Let's get going. You'll, you'll notice it's pulling away quite smoothly. And it's quite quiet. I mean, it's a Ringford motor in there. And it's quite quiet. Round she goes over there. And you'll see the obvious difference in shades. Okay. The, again, the coaches or a different um, shade to the locomotive, but they're all Southern Railway. And I believe the colour of the coaches is olive green. And these are actual Southern Railway coaches. So in my opinion, they're the right coaches to go with the right, with this locomotive. So tender driven, so it's from a different era. But I think it's a lovely looking model. I really do. I, I, I'm very pleased with this one as well. The scores class. Now the scores class, uh, they're both 440s, but in, in some ways, um, they're sort of different animals, okay? Now the, uh, the, the T9 was obviously at the time designed to be a top of the line express locomotive and 440s would have been more common back then. But these were built to suit a particular purpose, the, um, the scores class. They're the most powerful 440s ever made, and these were, came from the, were designed in the 1930s. At a time when you thought that you would have thought that by then, everybody were building uh, 460s, uh, building um, Pacifics and things like that. When in fact, there was a requirement for a locomotive. Now they weren't worried with the scores class, they weren't worried about the axle weight. 
What they were worried about was the length of the locomotive. And that's why they, that they built a four four oh. It's a very powerful one. I believe it's a four it's a, it's a three cylinder locomotive. They had to be um driven very, very carefully in stations because they could be um have a tendency to slip because you've you've really put an awful lot of power through four driving wheels instead of six. Now the other difference you'll notice is that the um the scores class it's got smoke deflectors, but the uh, the T9 didn't need uh, smoke deflectors because it's got a much taller chimney. Now, driving very, very well. I mean, it's very, very well indeed. I'm very pleased with this one. I don't know how much use these locomotives would have had, and I mean they seem to be uh, a lot of my buys I make have been quite good. I mean this one uh, it was good right from the word go, really. <laughs> in fact, in real life, uh, the uh, the T9 and the um, the Scores class they were both good, um, good and popular locomotives right from the outset. They didn't need a lot of uh, messing about to make them go. I'll just come around here so I've got a I've got to replace some fish plates on my layout. Um I'm getting I did a, a, a bit, I don't know if you heard the you know, the rails going over the rails over that end. But it was um the actual um rails are beginning to you know spread apart from each other a little bit. So we'll get those fish plates renewed as soon as I can. Bear in mind I take this uh, layout down every night. So uh Occasionally, I've got to do sort of maintenance, like changing fish plates if they feel a bit loose, things like that. Uh, the reason why I'm, I'm not fixing it permanently to the board at the moment is because <coughs> it's very much a work in progress, and the problem I've got is that the points go right over one of the joints, the joints in the board. Okay, one of the perils of a uh, of a mobile um, layout and even if I develop this as far as taking it out you know to, to eventually show anywhere if I ever get to that standard I think I'll probably have to still resort to that tactic of uh, laying the track out at the same time as um, when I'm putting out the, the, the layout itself Now the scores class are one of 40 produced and they were Europe's most powerful 440s. They could, um, now the actual um, T9 class could, uh, was capable of speeds of over 80 miles per hour, that was our uh, lovely C screen locomotive. These were capable of over 90 miles per hour. Now people were beginning to get cars in the 1930s but really there wasn't much on the road that would be able to do that, those speeds of uh, you know over 90 miles per hour that were generally available to the public um, and so really these were capable of really sort of high speeds for their, for their time. Now a couple of things I will say is that because it's a much older you know earlier locomotive let's say the coal load is a bit chunkier than uh, what you would get on the uh, something like the T9. You know, it, it's, it's of its time, but still a very, very attractive looking locomotive. So what I would, what I would say is, is that these second hand bargains, I bought this second hand, they're still out there, you know. There is a scores class uh, 440 available in the Hornby Railroad range. But I should imagine it might have less, slightly less detail than what you would get on something like this uh, superb locomotive here, Eastbourne. And, I mean, they would have the motor put into the actual locomotive itself rather than the tender. But they're, 
they're not that easy to find. I don't see them come that much on uh, on eBay. Well, you said there were the hunt packs and a lot of, you know, about four turn of it once. <coughs> but for me, I got tender driven versions of the uh, scores class and of the hunt class. And I'm quite happy with uh, with either of those four four A's. Uh, the hunt class is an LNER locomotive. Now it's a relatively short video tonight because it's getting quite late now. Now if you've en if you've enjoyed what you've actually seen running here, uh, give me a thumbs up, okay? Like, subscribe, and ring that bell, and um, click for all no the notifications for all content. And you'll get to see all of my uh, videos which I'm making. And remember, I've got quite a back catalogue of uh, videos now. I think there's over a hundred. My voice is going. Sorry. <coughs> one day um, there's, there's over a hundred videos now available on my channel and um, a lot of them are worth going back over I mean a lot of them will go back to my early days of um, making videos and um, but still I think the content is still uh, worth, worth watching okay so what I would say is thank you very very much for your interest okay and I should wish you farewell and um, bye bye and uh, also for tomorrow, obviously, is a historic day. It is um, the, the funeral of Her Majesty the Queen uh, Elizabeth II. Okay, and um, I'll be I'll be I'll be watching that tomorrow along with lots of other people, and I'll be thinking of you all, uh, uh, whether you're watching it on television or if you're going to be actually there. Um, in London itself, okay? So thank you very, very much, and bye-bye.